This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN and Shopify people. More on them after the reaction. What is going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? It is time to watch the theatrical cut. We will not have a discussion as to whether or not should they have done this and just released the director's cut. Who knows? John, how are you? I'm excited for the Netflix cut of the eventual Snyder cut. All righty. Well, that's what I like to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a chaotic schedule around here, so we got to get swinging on action. But let us know in the comments below. Did you like Rebel Moon? Did it live up to the hype? Are you excited for the director's cut? Should have just released it. I'm just saying, should have just don't go with that. But let's find out. Going with an open mind anyway. Leave a like on this video, ladies and gentlemen. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Get notified when we got something that comes up on this channel that might pique your interest because we got a few to wrap up before the end of the year. Thank you to all who have been here with us. Also, thank you to Prepper for helping us edit down the highlights on this bad boy. You guys have been an awesome team. Thank you so much. And lastly, massive thank you to all who have joined us at our Patreon page. One of the best ways to support the channel, undoubtedly. Full length reaction watch along where you sync up with your own copy of Rebel Moon with us. That is available for our super sexy rejects. We also cover several things over there with highlights and watch alongs included. Let's get into action, people. On the mother world, 1,000 kings ruled unchallenged in succession. I love his voice so much. <laughs> in the royal bloodline's lust for power, Oof. they consumed everything upon their planet. Of course. Bastards. Endless expansion. The realm marched its armies into the vastness of space, conquering everything oh. in its path. The Empire. That didn't look suggestive at all. Until the treachery of an assassin's blade struck down the king and queen. Oh. oh, fascinating. In the chaotic aftermath of the king's death, several conquered planets on the edge of the mother world's reach began to whisper of revolution. A rebellion? Oh. A senator named Belisarius used the opportunity to seize power, declaring himself regent. Don Belisario? Crush. Those who would call themselves rebel. Rebel. Oh. Damn. I wonder if Anthony Hopkins is a character or is he just a narrator? It's a good question. Maybe he's a transformer. Damn, that was a beautiful visual. I'm sure, we'll be saying that quite a quite a bit. Wowie. What a horizon. It's always a struggle to be a dirt farmer. Come on, Ray Luke. <laughs> Get going. <laughs> Save Tatooine, uh, you know. Oh, the is, moon. That a, is that a, a specific type of animal, or is that just a headpiece for a horse? Feel Mother Nature's banquet, her bountiful harvest. Oh my god, Zack Snyder. Hey! <laughs> I think wow. that is an alien horse creature. Korra! <gasps> the legend of Korra! Den was asking where you were. He and his brother got the big snow elk. He wanted you to see it before he dressed it. Why was he asking for me? Because he's... Into you. I, ju I just thought... I just thought. Yeah, you thought. Whoa, look at the waterfalls in the background. Dang. Oh, wow, yeah. This is aesthetically gorgeous for sure. Kudos to the production team. My people! Oh my god, it's. It's, it's Corey Stoll. Yeah. Gods of the harvest demand a tribute. I volunteer. But we all know it is the thrusting of hips and the loud sounds of pleasure that summon the seedlings to sprout. So you talking about banging? Getting going. For the harvest. For the very food we eat. Yeah. Populate. For the gods. <laughs> Much better than ritual sacrifice. Oh, she didn't go to... Harvest. I like how the door looks like ancient wooden, but it opens automatically. Have you thought of a more permanent relationship? Monogamy exists across the galaxy. I know that he's amenable to the idea. He's asked me himself. It's easy between us. 
Does it have to be more than that? You know, a friend with benefits is cool and all, but you got a mantle to uphold. That would be your last step to becoming a full member of this community. To be a wife? That would be the last step? You'll get your green card if you marry him. The two seasons I've spent here have given me happiness. But understand, I am a child of war. Not a to child truly of... love and be loved, I, I don't know if I'm capable of either. Just gotta find the fire within. It's damn good television. <laughs> I was taught that love is weakness. I don't know how that will ever change. It, it won't give up now. I don't know anything about her character yet. <laughs> or do I know everything about her character? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I don't know, I'm a sucker for <laughs> romantic flowery language like that. We're just like just laying it all out on the table for me, but you could tell but it's it like sounds pretty. You're in love with your own dialogue, and I like it. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm aware it's like heavy exposition, but whatever. <laughs> I just watch Christmas Christmas Hallmark movies, and it's. Better than that. <laughs> Night and day. <laughs> now, if Zack Snyder made a Hallmark movie. Oh my god, that'd be great. Slow motion! The seeds! <laughs> no! <laughs> it's a symbol. Oh my god, what a great hammer. Ooh. God, man. Hey, you've only been here for two seasons. <laughs> Who gives you the right? Suit up, Bumblebee. Her yellow jacket, you, you get it. What do you think they want? Everything. I don't care what the potential upside might be. A warship hanging over our lands cannot be good. We have three days until they descend. <laughs> Maybe we can get a better price from our friends in low orbit there, rather than having to deal with the cutthroats in Providence, selling our grain to God only knows. Providence, ironically named. I wonder what they would say if they found out where our excess went last year. Just say we ate it. Sindri, I don't have a side, only this community. That's my only loyalty. Can't imagine what your arc will be. Start by showing them goodwill, not fear. That we are their partners, not their adversaries. Did you say partner, Gunnar? I, di I did. Is that a problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I mean, come on. You know? <laughs> its purpose is to destroy, to subjugate, to enslave. Even I, even I know. <laughs> come on, man. Just look at that ship. <laughs> The British are coming. Extra, extra. Tie fighter. <laughs> <laughs> or a speeder bike. Damn. Great boy. touch on the birds. <laughs> and the debris flying at the camera, the scope. Call me delusional. I think so much emotion is evoked from. There's a way to derive emotion beyond a script. Oh, sure. You can derive emotion just how something is visually making you feel, you know? And they call that cinema. Like, this feels like a, a graphic novel so far. We're only like 50 minutes in, but it feels like a graphic novel. It absolutely does. <laughs> I'm having fun so far. I mean, <laughs> we're still in that one. Hello. I am Sindri, father of this village. You may call me daddy. I'm Admiral Atticus Snoke, loyal representative of the slain king. I welcome you to his warm embrace. Give him a hug. That was the least expected gesture. Mm -hmm. That's a very long hug. May I have a glass of your delicious milk? Uh-oh. We've carved out a simple life here. You're marked. In the director's cut, he paused and had like 30 minutes of conversation with her. Yes. <laughs> There's so much nuance. You understand the feeling of, of, of like a father that need to feed your children, yeah? Of course he does. I was hoping that your land and the people of Velt might be able to help as we search for a small band of revolutionaries hiding in this very system. He is Hans Lund. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we are humble farmers, far removed from the politics of the mother world. The rebels we seek have been attacking our supply ports, led by a woman named Devra Bloodhack. Ooh. The capture's inevitable. However, it's taken longer than anticipated. We found ourselves admittedly low on stores. Inevitable? You may have heard an army runs on its stomach. <laughs> That's true. That's what Rob Zombie says. John Carpenter before him. I was thinking of a partnership where you supply us with food. In exchange, you're compensated at, let's call it triple market value, shall we? With that windfall, you'll be <laughs> by plenty of harvesters. 
Robots won't have to do this difficult work by hand. Two Dario's in the same scene. It's crazy. Is Cory gonna die? I think he gonna die. And then the people of Velt will rise up. You see, the land is rocky and yields barely enough to feed ourselves. So it is with sincere apologies that we must decline the offer. Grateful for the presence of such a benevolent and powerful protector. <laughs> it sounds very sincere. Yeah. No surplus. None at all? Whoa, look at that glisten in his eye. What the hell's going on there? You got somebody off camera shining a light. Who's the man or woman among you who oversees the harvest? Uh-oh. There must be one of you whose thumb is greener than the rest. <laughs> Someone? Don't do it. Ah. That is me. Yes, I, I oversee the harvest. God damn it, Gunner. Just trying to understand how I could be so wrong about what this land could yield. That's all. You better make up some good, buddy. Sindri, our beloved father, is always looking out for the welfare of our village. <laughs> That's you. Keeping reserves in case of famine or drought, which, as you know, is the responsibility of a leader. I would not have said that. Terrible line. But we have been lucky these last few seasons. Uh-oh. And our surplus has been more than we can store. Uh-oh. Dude. Chance that we can spare a small amount, depending, of course, on the scale of your needs. Mm, good. What are you doing, man? It's always wise to hold some in reserve, isn't it, Father? Yep. Yep. Oh, dude. Yep, yep, yep. Why you should have me believe this land could barely yield enough to feed your people? No one is trying to mislead you. Sindri simply has a slightly more conservative view on reserves than I do. I'm a liberal. But we're both excited about a possible partnership. He said partnership. Father, who is this exactly? Um, my, it's of my no name. consequence. I have been empowered by my people to speak for them. This is getting complicated. You would be wise to ignore him. Well, a rift. Yes. It's not quite the idyllic community I'd first seen. Offer you some advice when dealing with subordinates who need to be kept in place. Oh, you kill them. Give them a smack. A gentle reminder of just how those with power deal with those without. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm afraid for her, man. Is he gonna give her the beat down? Yeah, who's this villain? He's good. That's Green? That's his name. Yeah. I, I, let me show you what I mean. Nah, it's a ploy. He knows he can get information out of him. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. You called it. Ooh. Oh, my God. You should have listened. Whoa. What did you do? Oh, dude. Can I expect my harvest? I mean, Connor, you say the stupidest shit, dude. I said, tell me, partner, when I can expect my harvest. Woof. Nine, nine weeks. Very well. In ten weeks, I shall return. And you shall have my 10,000 bushels prepared for my ship. We barely produced 12,000 bushels. <laughs> I, I don't understand what you want. You should have thought about that, man. You are so frustrating, man. Why is this Gunner guy such an idiot? I don't know. It was, like, really obvious the second he started opening his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything he says, just like, dude, what's wrong with you? He's never left this moon. <laughs> he knows nothing about military force. Hello, everyone. Oh, that's good. They're gonna have them to look after. That's good. Whoa! Oh, sweet. Oh, it's the new Tesla Optimus. I am JC1435 of the Mechanicus Militarium. That's Anthony Hopkins. It is my honor to serve. He's the narrator of the story, too? It's okay. No. Mm. Dude. <sighs> A waste. Thank you. Bet this dude's even more messed up yeah, than the other yeah. guy. He's just pretending. What in the name of the old gods are you looking at? I'm sorry. I was just waiting to see if you needed some more water. Some more water? Bajak! That's a Jimmy man! Ah! I don't know if we had any of those left. Oh, that's what they're called. A Jimmy. Right, careful. The ground's uneven till you get to the bridge. Thank you, Private Harris, but I believe I can manage. You know, they won't fight anymore, boss. What do you mean they won't fight anymore? Expired droids. Once the king was killed, they just lay down their weapons and refuse to fight. A new king must ascend. No matter what I do, he doesn't fight back. Whoa, dude. Careful with that stuff, you stupid machine. I do need to scrap you, dumb shit. Yummy. 
Uh oh. Hearing me. Dude. Whoa! Damn. Why are you abusing this pacifistic droid? I could kill you right now. No one would care. I'm gonna die. Dude. <laughs> Come on, boy. Do you wanna die? I said enough. Get these crates into that house now. Tonally, it really rides the line of an R-rated movie. Get up. Go to the river. Clean yourself. Get back to work. Get back to work, you assholes. That includes you, Marcus. Now, why don't you shoot some of your other cohorts here? Thank you. That is kind. You're a soldier? Long ago. Do you mind? I'm Sam. God, that does look incredible. <laughs> Lighting, too. Do you know the story of our slain king and his beautiful daughter, the princess Issa? Issa Rae? Well, you remind me of her. Really? And even before she was born, I and my brothers pledged everything we were, everything that dwells inside this metal skin, to fight in her name. He will be loyal to you, because you look like her. That she, as prophesied, had been born of flesh and blood into our world. I felt a great warmth and trusted that she was to usher in a new age of peace and compassion. This robot's projecting. On the day of her coronation, she, along with our honored king and queen, were assassinated in cold blood by those they trusted most. Et tu, Brute. I'm afraid our compassion, our kindness, our very joy died with that young girl. I like the inclusion of this artificial intelligence a lot. It was very emotional and devoted. You know. Oh, now you can go to Coachella. There's a little bit of spirit coming back. Like I've always thought in Star Wars especially, when it comes to droids, of what is the discussion around what is the life around a droid? I'm really kind of getting that desired effect here. Yeah. More than just like AI robots and what do we do about them? Like this like it's a real feels like an actual servant. person. Yeah. yeah. But yet they treat him like he's disposable. How about we bring in the crop and we fall on their mercy? They wouldn't be able to kill us. They would need us. Yeah. He's right. Farming. That is our skill. That they know. cannot. There are no other farmers in the whole galaxy. We can appeal to those gentlemen in the granary. Yes. Uh, appeal to their humanity. Yeah, they... Oh, Mario is running away. You must face your trauma in your past. Become the leader of the resistance. Become the child of fire. When I found you in the wreckage of that ship, I considered leaving you. Oh my god, just keep laying it all out for me. This is drama. <laughs> but do I for a moment regret bringing you into our lives? I do not. Just tell me everything. You've become a part of us. And yet now you leave when we need you most. One of us. One of us. What if we did fight? Not only us, but others. Who? Who else do you think others, would come here and others, fight? All this that have reason to hate all that the mother world represents. A rebel alliance. What if you could find the warriors that Noble seeks? The outlaws to fight alongside us. If I give them hope, they fight and surely lose. They need a new hope. Look, I'm really not just giving it a pass. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it has something to do with seeing such terrible Rotten Tomatoes, of course. Yes, are there things that remind me of Star Wars in here? Of course, a farmer girl, whatever. And Dune. But, yeah, absolutely. I'm saying that specifically in the Star Wars aspect side of things. We are really staying here in the farmer lifestyle side. Sure. Really living, living in it, it and how poor and hard it is to live like this. Yeah. <laughs> Agree. But, and before we get into any big rebellion action, as opposed to like, let's hurry it up. We got to get to the exciting stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I kind of appreciate it. Yeah. So it's, it's breathing for what it is. <laughs> oh, this is icky. Oh, no. You can't ignore that. Come on. And my axe. <laughs> I'm attracted to her. <laughs> we shared eye contact. I have romance with her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. I make you watch every day as she turns from a farm girl. Do I really hope this sequence doesn't get any longer in the already cut. Yeah, I hope so too. This will sounds nice. You're not gonna do anything. Not until I. 
Oh my god, this is a PG-13 movie? I am surprised. I don't, that is very harsh language. Yeah, Jesus is. Christ. Maybe it is that thing where they cut so much out of the R-rated that they were like, oh, we'll give you the PG-13, because it's way less harsh than it was before. Stop. Dessert. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, don't make her well, cut loose. Like, showing the ugliness of the soldiers. I Yeah, sure, it's like plot-wise of, of derivative, but still, I don't know. It's kind of like the R-rated version of it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I don't know. Take the gun. She going to leave the cannoli. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Oh, those ringing sounds. Oh, God. Yeah, I got chills. Yeah. <gasps> Damn. Boom. Boom. Ah, pocket sand. Oh, I like their blaster sound effects. Ah. Woo! Oh. Damn. Man, man, that's how to do go. action in slow mo. <laughs> slow and slower. <laughs> oh, ha, 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 right in the foot. Woo! Nice, man. Oh. Nice. Oh, yes. Oh, right in the juggler. And nothing came out the back. Is that what you want? Huh? Huh? Ah, look who decided to join us. Rise up, robot. Come <laughs> on, Hopkins. Rise up, robot. No. In your flower crown. Yes. He has hostage the girl that reminds you of the girl who died. <laughs> Killed it. Woo! Oh wow! Good shot. It's good to have K two S O on your team. What have I? He looks. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow this is also the first time the robot has witnessed these soldiers behaving this way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're gonna have to fight. Hell yeah, you, we you are. Put that on them. They didn't want to fight. West. I feared it could be dangerous. That is an ornate gun. Where will he go? General named Titus, once a hero of the realm, who turned his own forces against those of the Motherworld. Oh, cool. Where's he? Last I heard, he was still out there somewhere. That sounds like a very vague... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We got our mission. Gunner, last year in Providence, you sold grain to the Resistance. I thought you had no scruples, man. I met a man there who introduced me to the insurgents. The blood taxes. <laughs> then you'll take me to him. Of course I will. I don't trust you, Gunner. Yeah, he gonna betray you. I don't trust you. It does have a very interesting look with these lenses. So they created, again, Zack Snyder and his team made special lenses for this movie that have all kinds of distortion, like vignette style around the frame. How can you know they will destroy us? When they first came to my world, I was nine years old. They never asked for anything. Flashback. Only the lust for destruction. When the gun was smaller. Oh. Commanded by a young general named Belisarius, who relished the ecstasy of combat. There are so many names to keep up with. I know. <laughs> a little too much. <laughs> it wouldn't be a classic sci-fi epic without him. <laughs> But he had served only to enrage the young general and gave him provocation to take out that anger on the innocent. Yeah, display of power. I found myself face to face with Belisarius. Oh, damn. Who loved commanding his troops, not from the cunning tower of his ships, but on the battlefield, but on the battlefield itself. As a real leader. Is he gonna... Wow. Hmm. Huh. Belisarius killed my entire family and took me with him. I don't know why he spared me. Why of the hundreds of thousands that died at his hands, he chose me to live. Does the red light mean the gun is out? Saw something in me, I suppose. Someone's sharing his pain. 
He can condition you because you were innocent and corrupt you. And for five years, I lived on that ship with its soldiers who were my only family. No softness. Only the hard lessons of war. Oh, the effects look flipping beautiful, man. And I was his child. I was his protege. I was his student. And I loved it. Daughter of a decorated commander. Friend to the king and the royal family. Living a life of privilege. Carry always <laughs> It is. Wow. Oh, so she knows exactly what they do because she was raising the evil. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You're marked, Scar Guy. Someone we would defend with our lives when the politics of expansion became too abstract and the why of the huh. conquest was lost in the sheer savagery of combat. That is clever and diabolical, actually. That's what I encourage here at Real Reject. Yes, fall in <laughs> love with somebody. <laughs> at the age of 18, I was made an officer wow. and given a command. <laughs> I just want to know what frame rates they are going in between. <laughs> it's a very specific camera that, yeah. they, that they use. It's like 10 frames a second, 600 frames a second. <laughs> Ooh. I can't tell which is cooler, reloading the gun or shooting the gun and screaming. It's actually kind of cool to see a laser gun that requires a reload. Yeah. Did she lead them to conquest? How many towns and villages did you destroy with your own two hands? Hawkshaws. Bounty hunters. Whoa. Whoa! That. Man, that is inventive. Yeah. That's our guy. That's the man we came to see. The one that introduced me to the blood axes. Well, it's time to have a fight scene in the rain. Let's go. Let's get it going. This honestly feels more like what Book of Boba Fett wanted to I be. I know, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Gotta give it to this. <laughs> our best chance to find the blood axes is to contact the Leviticans. It might expose us. First we find General Titus, then we'll see about your rebels. Titus Andromedon. <laughs> First time, son. Move on, he's not for sale. Everything's for sale in this place, so... <laughs> upstairs with relatively clean sheets. Huh? Very generous. This is progressive. But yeah. I don't think so. Oh, wow! I said move on. Bitch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This guy feels like a 300 character. Has anyone here heard of General Titus? Turn his own men on the Mother World's forces. <laughs> oh, neat. Damn. Last I heard he was fighting in the Coliseum at Pollux. Pollux, Troy. Guess we need to find a ship to take us to Pollux. You're catching on. You're, you're naming the plot beats. You should have killed me. I'm gonna give you one chance. Are you gonna give all of us? <laughs> we all have a gun. <laughs> Killer. I love the bartender. Oh, sideways. Sexy. Damn. Saloon shootout. <laughs> Whoa. He's chosen a side. Boom. Yeah. I don't like bounty hunters. And to be clear, I don't like bounty hunters either. So you're a gun for hire? Uh, no, that's not my thing. Then what are you, Mr. Wildcard? <laughs> I heard you in there trying to get to Pollux. I could help you. Oh, I understand. We're just simple farmers. We're searching for soldiers for a fight <laughs> against the monster. <laughs> you're full of shit, man. My name's Kai. Come on, my ship's dying at port. <laughs> nice to meet you, Kai. Kai, I like him already. All right, so far I think everything is obvious as a statement as it is for a Zack Snyder film. Technically gorgeous. A uh, nice little hodgepodge of a whole bunch of other things. Aesthetically yeah. grand, cool action, great visuals. 
good atmosphere and mood. Still not super invested in the characters. <laughs> <laughs> he is like the last bit of oomph it needs. Yes. Is like truly distinct and interesting characters. Yeah. I'm liking the movie. Don't get me wrong. I am. I'm, I'm really yeah. liking it, but I, I could use some investment in the characters a little stronger. That is not just explain your background to me. It does make <laughs> you wonder, like, is the is the director's cut just going to be like, a bunch of little character moments added yeah. back in. <laughs> what is the man doing? He's inflating his muscles. They've captured a creature that has important information about the insurgents. Deborah Bloddack and her brother. Wowie. That's excellent, Cassie. Uh, let me get it on with my hentai creature here. These people want to talk to you. What got that chain on your leg? You're here to accuse me of crimes against the mother world. I'm guilty as charged. Take it up with him. Mm -hmm. It's not why we're here. Would you like to do more crimes against the mother world? And we're looking to hire some fighters to train and protect us against a force from the mother world. Like the seven samurai. <laughs> 300,000 dirhams ought to cover any inconvenience I've suffered. We don't have that kind of money. No money. What do you have? I do love to gamble. If Terry can break that creature out there, his debts are squared with me. It's like he knew what it was before it was even said. Yep. <laughs> wow. Neat. Oh, he bound. Show respect. Is this the language this mythical bird speaks? Yep. They're from the same place. Just the two of them. <laughs> oh. Tame the horse. <laughs> He's moving along really quick. I was about to show say, up like, to the is, bar. <laughs> is this sequence any longer in the director's cut? <laughs> I just say, show up to the bar. How do I get out of this debt? Yo, it's high stakes. You got to tame that beast. He tames the beast. He tames the beast immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, look sexy. Oh, yeah. To Jake Sully, you did it. He is impressive. Oh, wow. Oh. A lot of these locations do look very real. Yeah. Ow. Is he trying to buck him off? Oh. No. Ouch. Come out. He is a very physically fit man. Let's go, T-Hawk. <laughs> Wonder what Zack Snyder's Clash of the Titans would be like. With your reputation, we thought it might be something you'd be interested in. Nemesis, please, please. Hold her. Nemesis? I just want to talk. I'm clearly distressed. That's true. Oh, wow. What the hell? What is she holding on to? I don't know why you're here. You want the child. You're that lady from Doctor Who. Yes, I do. You can't have this one. This one is mine. Child of Spider. She has a mother who's waiting. Uh -huh. Who's missing. And why should I care about that mother's pain when no one is here for my pain? Oh, it's um, Jenna Malone? Before they came, taste the air. Weakens my eggs and now my children cannot emerge. She looks like the board queen. Adjusted. I will kill this mm. child, and I will keep killing until every mother weeps tears of regret forever, having come to the mines of Dag. The mines of Dagus. We're just gonna kill this, kill this creature off. I guess she's got to. Let's <laughs> get an insert of Charlie Hunnam. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I like all of her different eyeballs. <laughs> I guess having that many legs is both an advantage and a vulnerability. Nice. <laughs> Whoa, damn. How did they film this? Damn. I don't know. By removing the head or destroying the brain. <laughs> Um, ah, or that should do it. Oh. Oh, sexy. 
Let's go. Them shotgun blade lightsabers. <laughs> It's a nice way to keep it just this side of not lightsaber, but still lightsaber. Yeah. They're technically metal. They're just super hot. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I like the waves that precede it. Cauterize that wound. Oh. The, the necessity for a director's cut has never felt more necessary to me it's until we got to this part of the movie. This is literally about to say. Like, I feel like we just skipped a whole, like, a board of chunk here to really get invested in this one. The entire team's <laughs> intro is just their action scene. Yeah. yeah. But there's like whole other side of the world now. And it's behaving like I already know the vibe of this character more than from just these few moments. For my loyalty and service, I was promoted to the elite guard of the royal family. The appointment was engineered by my father. Uh oh. The Owls of Kahul! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have known him with something. I was given the honor of being the bodyguard to Princess Isa. Oh my god. Damn, what did you do? In the old stories of the queen, it was said that she had the power to give life. Ah. She's Jesus. She's Jesus. <laughs> Damn. And it was believed that the princess might have that same power. I saw on more than one occasion things that I couldn't explain. I half expected it to be like grotesque. I'm a bird. <laughs> Back to life. <laughs> chirp, chirp. Aww. Lady, you know exactly what you just witnessed. You saw a dead bird get brought to her yeah, and was resurrected. Lazarus. It's Come pretty, on, man. Pretty straightforward, actually. When she becomes queen, I believe she'll bring a compassion that I've <laughs> lost after all these hard years of war. Very believable, beard. Of course. And all of his expressions not to make it fall off. Coliseum. Nice. Straight up called Gladiator. <laughs> I didn't even notice that so right now. Yep. <laughs> Romane they go the house. Oh my dude. Let's go. Back in Gladiator again. That's Jimon Hansu? Pretty sure. Are you not General Titus? I don't know what you're running your mouth about. Because my best hope is that long ago General is still in front of me. Oh, he is. I'm here to make you an offer, to give you a chance at redemption. Yeah. I am beyond redemption. What about all the dead men you once commanded? Gotta grow your Shazam beard out. If not redemption, what about revenge? Revenge chin. Recruit a character, cut to reactions of the people watching. Recruit a character. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? They just recruit him? Yep, he's in. <laughs> okay, all right. We're on the way. <laughs> all right, right. Next one. <laughs> Check. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the narrative flaws are really beginning to, like, like about 25 minutes ago, they really started showing themselves. Well, the <laughs> more they, they cut to- And the more to, they go, the quicker they get. The more they cut to all of them watching her recruit, the more I'm like, oh, wait, there's a team here, and I don't feel like it at all. <laughs> Look at that eclipse. I'd love to see a map of this galaxy. It's a very interestingly designed planet. Oh. Ray Fisher. Oh, that's Ray Fisher? I believe it is. We bought your grain to feed our fighters. Do not confuse your business of commerce with our business of revolution. <laughs> Ooh. But we are no longer in need of your grain. King Leviticus' kindness has been more than enough to sustain us. Uh oh, we're gonna get into a big blowout. We eat kindness now. With you, we can mount a real defense. We can pay you with the surplus from our harvest. <laughs> that ship cannot be destroyed by a few dozen fighters. This man is not a revolutionary. He's a simple farmer. Oof. Their village is now threatened by Admiral Noble in pursuit of your revolution. Who are you? <laughs> I will go. Sure. My man. We cannot fight in the open against the King's case. If the farmer found us, it won't be long before Noble does. And I will not allow another world to fall in our name. I really need to start caring about some people. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he was in the Snyder Cut. Uh, I love him. <laughs> 
come seeking our help to stand against a dreadnought of the mother world. Is that not what we stand for? We haven't gotten a strong sense yet of the pall that the that the mother the, world, the mother cast, world cast, cast over everyone. Yeah. yeah, and we're like so late into the movie. <laughs> yeah. Who among you is willing to die for what we believe rather than hide behind it? I mean, I guess we're just left to assume that every slum and shitty place we've seen so far is that way because of the mother world. But it'd be nice to see some regular people under the foot of tyranny. Or wherever, we, wherever just... we cut to, like some type of wrong injustice has been done to the people of the mother world. It's that's kind of like quantum mania. Bec because of how, how the mother world affected them in yeah. some way. Like there needs to be something personal. And there's yeah. nothing really personal yet other than but they'll give like a backstory like general backstory or generalization of them so the rise of a rebellion is not really felt as a catharsis due to that and we're an hour and a half in so i feel like i can say that confidently nah wait another I, I, 30 I minutes patient <laughs> why would he agree to help you you think they should seem short-sighted this whole thing feels short <laughs> guilt it's a powerful thing the belly of honor. Ooh. You had more resist and power to speak of. You wouldn't need so badly. You are willing to fight with us. Since you're begging. I finally decided after several stops. <laughs> there is one complication. A shite in the cargo hold. I could buy her swing and get on to fall. Might be wise to sever my ties to life as a thief before we go picking a fight with the dreadnought. And we can pick up another teammate along the way. <laughs> what? No. I have told you the truth. I have nothing more. I swear to God, man, this movie doesn't get nominated for visuals. Like it I, is, it is re remarkable. Yeah, like, like the visuals are remarkable. Oh yeah, it is the best visual effects movie, heavy movie I've seen all year. A ship is named the King's Gaze. No. So we named the ship to remind us of the power in that benevolent gaze. It was lost to charity. Mm that if by God's will that gaze should fall upon us and be held for even the briefest of moments. Charity, help get the Snyder Cut going. Yep. Aw, oh, slow it down. Nope. Ouch. Owie. Looks like a femur or something. We received a message from one of her hotshots. They're closing in on the blood axis. Are they supposed to be like the Bene Gesture? What are these guys? Yeah, I guess so. But once you've raised the planet, We'll rendezvous, extract the exact location of the rest of the insurgents, and destroy them once and for all. Yes. I don't even think they care about the farmers anymore. <laughs> yeah, seems like such a small fish on their docket. Are we looking? Everything's done. What? All right, let's move. Yes. What? Yeah. On your mark. It's an. A it's a trap. No. How could you? Ooh. No. Oh, no. No. Ah, good reveal. They're like the battle droids, but, or, or the, the ones that roll up and, but if they could imprison you instead of shoot you. On your knees. What the hell, Charlie Hunnam? Now is not the time to be a hero. Talking to the wrong character about that. Yeah. Gunner's nothing but. Or should I call you Arthalaeus? He knows. Why did you say that? Do you know what the mother world did to my planet? Can we see it? They tortured every man, woman, and child. Is he from Snow World? Oh, maybe. You know what that taught me? Look out for yourself. Never set foot on the wrong side of history. Wow. Is that what you think we're doing? No. You've chosen a side that doesn't even make it to the history books. What happened to Honor? <laughs> what did happen to her? Piece of shit. <laughs> it was a good scene. Be more heartbreaking if I cared about them. What are you talking about? <laughs> Commander Bloodax, leader of the very insurgency, the King's Gaze was sent to this back quarter of the galaxy to capture her. <laughs> yeah, Ed Screen's great at this, though. Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a really He's my favorite part. I understand why all of them are here, but you. What could you possibly hope to gain by mounting such a feeble stand? <laughs> the legendary swordswoman known only by the name of Nemesis. Aww. Do you know what you've done for me, Arthalaeus? Assembling yourself as such? 
You've promoted me to the top. I'll be a hero of the realm. The right songs of my feats of courage. It's not like I didn't do all the work. Have him killed. You play your cards right, you at least might make it out of this alive. You're sick. And you're a coward. Which is worse. All you have to do is pull the trigger. More of a squeeze, really. Is it a ploy that actually helps? Yeah, is he about to do a double, double agent turn? It's gonna turn to a gun. Whoa, Whoa yeah! Let's Whoa. go! Gunner! Spiked him. <laughs> Did they all get free? I don't think so. I'm surprised the others haven't been Swiss cheesed by now. Yes. The way they realize these blades is incredible. Yeah. It is like a femur or a big bone. That's cool. Yee! Whoa. Okay, camera mounts a shot on the guns. I got cool extras in this fight. Look at the babs. Whoa. What's she doing there? Just using him as like a shield? Awesome. Oh no! Oh! No! Is that the end of Ray Fisher's character? I hope not. Oh! No! No! Uh oh. Hot stuff right there. Yeah. I wanna know what her workout regimen was for this. Oh. Whoa. Beautiful devastation. Oh. You broke his bone. No. Bonk. Ooh. Come on, Sophia Batella. What'd you eat all those egg whites for? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Hey. She is strong. Ooh. Whip his ass. Yeah, give him the beat down. Oh, nice. Didn't break it before? I like this style of how she has to slowly chip down away at his weapon. Yeah. Ah. No, oh, damn. <laughs> Stabbed in the leg with a leg bone. Oh, nice. This is perfect. <laughs> wow! Not bad. Lost my pearlies in the war. This is more than just a foreign trick officer and some of his men. Is it? It's the beginning of something. Something? That's they, for sure. They have to tell us what happened. After the death of an admiral, protocol would demand the ship's return. That's good. We still get paid, I presume. A deal is a deal. Paid an honor. Uh, you thanks, Gunnar. You know, I never did trust that pilot. We all owe him thanks. I have time enough to trust the pilot. Wow, Gunnar. Redemption. Is this the end of the movie? No. Is what that dead bounty hunter said true? That you're Athelias? Kai was a liar and a thief who nearly sold you all for a profit. But yes, it's true. Yeah, it's also my name. There! That's our village. This looks like the wheat field from 300 before they leave for battle. Let's go. Where's our robot? Oh, it's a robot. Hey! Whoa, what just happened? He's gonna go become Merlin and live in the woods. That dude had a lot of Austrian development. <laughs> yep. Whole life story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His flower crown grew into antlers. Roughing no it in the way. land. Does Ed screen live? Wasting no time. Oh. 
Nice spray. Zack Snyder is the one guy for whom, like, no matter what the quality of the movie is, you want the art of book. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Why is this guy so important? Wow. Oh, yeah, when he was, like, filling himself up and stuff. Yeah, when he was smoking that hookah. Link is established. I love how you can get away with gore like that when it's like, oh, he's an android. Yeah. It's sci-fi. It's not real. Baby. Neo. Huh. So you gotta mutate astral energy. Send him. Send him? Are there more bodies? Is he on Vormir? Thanks, game. Put into a medium, there's like a leviathan underneath the water. What the hell? Master, Valisaria. Oscar Isaac. I have found Arthur Leith. She was in the company of the disgraced General Titus and Darian Bloodex. We are close to capturing them. Did you think that this would be good news? Look how real the... An old age makeup? The beard. Oh, that too. So she is within our grasp. She keep reiterating who these people are. <laughs> <laughs> you will capture my daughter alive and bring back my precious child to me. The villains have way more presence than any of the protagonists. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> bring him back just to kill him again! Wow. I hope we see full frontal in the director's cut. I have no heartbeat or brain function. Hit him with everything. Suddenly it's like Doctor Who the aesthetics. <laughs> Fire everything! Yeah! <laughs> nice. <laughs> ah. All right. Interesting. All right. Three people wrote that screenplay. I got thoughts. <laughs> I've got thoughts. Do you know? <laughs> and I will tell you this much. Lay it on. That these thoughts wouldn't be possible. Oh, what's that? How's today's that? today's sponsor. <laughs> ah. Thank you to Shopify for sponsoring, which is what we use for our merch store and is our game-changing partner in e-commerce. So whether you're launching a passion project or scaling to new heights, Shopify is the e-commerce powerhouse guiding you at every step. From creating your first online store to opening physical locations, Shopify makes it seamless. It's perfect whether you're selling exclusive merch or unique collectibles, thanks to their all-encompassing platform for both online and in-store sales. Their checkout system unmatched. It's 36% more effective at converting visitors into buyers than other platforms. And let's not forget Shopify Magic, the AI tool that elevates your business with minimal effort. But seriously, reflecting on our journey using Shopify for www.rejectnationshop.com, it's been transformative. The transition, smooth, growth, exponential. Thank you again, Reject Nation. From simplifying sales to scaling our offerings, Shopify has been a cornerstone of our success. And Shopify isn't just for us. It powers 10% of US e-commerce, backing businesses big and small in over 175 countries. Their award-winning support always there to guide you. So ready to join the revolution? Sign up for Shopify at only a dollar a month at shopify.com slash rejects. All lowercase, shopify.com slash rejects. Start your Shopify success story now. Let's grow together with Shopify, team. Big thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video, a real game changer I've been using for years. That's right, years. So whenever they want to work with us, it's an instant yes. You've likely heard about ExpressVPN for online privacy and security, but there's more to it than that. However, there was a very real incident recently with Spectrum showing down my internet and contacting me due to a suspecting hacking attempt. And funny enough, I realized I hadn't actually activated my ExpressVPN on my new laptop that I got a couple of months ago. So I was paying the consequences. Having faced a serious hacking issue on YouTube a couple of years ago, that made ExpressVPN my go-to for both security and freedom. I mean it. And yes, what you've heard is true. Believe me, this channel knows. You can use ExpressVPN to watch movies and shows on Netflix that are not available in your country. This means accessing a vast array of content of over 100 countries, like a global cinema at your fingertips. It's super easy. Open ExpressVPN, switch locations, refresh the browser, and there you have it. Whether it's K-dramas on South Korean Netflix, Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, or more, ExpressVPN has you covered. And it's incredibly fast, ensuring no buffering or lag for smooth HD streaming. It's versatile too, working on not just computers, but phones, media consoles, smart TV,
TVs, and more. This means you can enjoy your favorite shows on anywhere, any screen, protect and elevate your internet experience. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, use my link, expressvpn.com slash rejects, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash rejects. So head to expressvpn.com slash rejects to learn more. Thank you again. All righty. Thank you to our sponsors. And let's talk about the Rebel Moon, a uh, song, Bird of Fire and Ice. Uh, <laughs> what's it called? It. Child, child of fire. fire. A Child of Fire. Okay. Yeah. That's easy enough to remember. I shouldn't have such a hard time. Anywho. Um, yeah. Overall, I liked it. I thought I might have like a lot of thoughts on this movie. And my thoughts, I feel like, are very simple and straightforward. I express them throughout the reaction. If you guys are listening to this on Apple and Spotify, you can go ahead, rate this review. Um, and, uh, yeah, that would be very much appreciated. Anywho, yeah. So, obviously, it goes without saying, it's a Zack Snyder film. You expect it to look good. Rare is the day. I can't even think of a day where we were here and said, this film looks awful. Yeah. I don't think we've ever said that. And I think this is one of his best looking films he has ever done. Mm-hmm. It is stunning from beginning to end. I The only live action film I haven't seen of his is um, Sucker Punch. And from what I understand of that movie, is it's supposed to kind of feel a little bit like a dream. I don't know anything about the movie, really. So I, it's supposed to feel like a dream. And what I was loving about the aesthetics here is that while it is like a dream come true of mm-hmm. watching like a child's fantasy come to life, it <laughs> it still felt tangible and real, and that's the element of it that has it feeling lived in is just how gorgeous, not like the blend of practical effects, the everything that's going on in the background, the backdrops of things, not just what's in the center of frame, but the backdrops, uh, the skies, all of it. Was stunning. This is probably in terms of visual effects. It, you know, like we have some great looking movies this year, and but in terms of a movie that heavily relies on CGI, mm. I would say this is undoubtedly the best looking movie I've seen all year that does that. I can't think of another one. Can you? I can't think of another one. When Way, way Wilder was like the way end of last year, right? Yeah, it does not yeah, count. So, that counts yeah, as last probably year, John. Probably the best uh, looking yeah. one of the year. I mean, yeah, like all the effects from the creatures to the ships to the, you know, melding of all the movie magic looked mwah, beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. The action, again, uh, one thing you expect from Zack Snyder, the action is going to be cool. The action was really cool. Mm-hmm. And I think his mastery blend of... He's known for his slow mo, hmm. and I actually feel like there wasn't as much slow mo as I thought there would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because you look at this and you hear like, "Oh, it's been cut down." So like, "Oh, what are they going to do? Just indulge in tons and tons of slow mo?" But really, it was only a couple, you know, punctuation shots that hark into that like three hundred style speed ramping. Yeah, and uh, and I mean too, just to real quick to bolster the effects, I do admire that you know for as much as Zack Snyder came to big prominence with a movie like three hundred that is like all shot on green screens you know like you do appreciate that while there are tons and tons of visual effects they built the town apparently and they you know built these fields and stuff like that and and those things go a long way towards selling a lot of this stuff too i would say definitely because it it all looked real and a lot of times i couldn't tell like what was real and what wasn't in terms of certain backdrops that they were inhabiting yeah and like the costumes like everything from a practical standpoint the music again who, who did is it tom yolken i don't tom know Wiener's initials i don't know okay. he's not it's not han zimmer but it, it sounds close <laughs> one enough. of han zimmer's it's interns. either junkie xl or tom hulken smokenburger we had imdb right i know but it's time. easier just to ask google yeah, tom uh, hulken that's tom hulken yeah, he did do the score for it mm-hmm. then again the percussive tune with the mixture of stuff that felt very tribalistic mm-hmm. um as well as like orchestral sounds like so much of the mood and aura relied heavily on its aesthetic and one thing that you can say that speaks loudly to Zack snyder's films is aesthetically speaking that in itself is one of the voices of the movie Mm. you know it's like you can look at script which has like dialogue and performances and all those things and that is just one element of the voice and oftentimes that is the main reliance of voice and it's a really important part but i think with Zack snyder you want to see how much of that really lands and i do think that you know even if at times where there were like complaints happening or things about characterization or narrative it was 
I, I, I would find myself like complaining about something and then being like, but they're going, damn, look at this. You know, like it's I, imminently uh, watchable. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the time, what I find that happens with me in a movie, and, and I've even had this with other Zack Snyder films, uh, to some of his theatrical cuts, I would say, is I will be watching it and I won't, I might have issues with the story. And then, this, but for a lot of films out there, I will find that yeah it looks pretty but man i'm just so bored i'm just so checked out because of the narrative itself is so not doing it for me and that it won't that it won't matter and then i i would find myself here being like no i still like love what i'm looking at <laughs> like yeah, i would still yeah. really love what i'm looking at i'm not on any substances right now or anything i'm totally sober craig yeah i would find myself yep. still going whoa i am engrossed by this and especially to watch this with headphones on uh, I think uh, being absorbed into the sound design. So, so much of this was working for me on just the technical aspect. And not everything narratively is bad or something like that, right? Uh, it, 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 but on the technical aspect of, of it all, I was so engrossed by the painting I was witnessing that that alone is enough for me to recommend it. It is yeah. just off of that. And it's not the usual types. Of, like there's some Zack Snyder earmarks you would normally expect However, I still think it goes, it elevates above that. You know, like lately he's been kind of doing something that's more real world, the blend army of darkness. Uh, I would even say even Zack Snyder's dead army, army of the dead, <laughs> uh, Zack Snyder's justice league, uh, Batman v Superman. So that feels more real world inhabited. Yeah. It's been a while since he's done a movie. That's just purely a fantastical realm. Yeah. You know? And, and that's what, that's what makes me curious to see sucker punch. And, and this seems like a compliment to the vague things I know about that, except in like a much less off putting package. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and you know, and then when it comes to performances, I would say the highlights for me are Ed screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he was like, he was a scene stealer whenever he was there. Yeah. He's just got so much, I don't know. He's having fun chewing the scenery, but not doing it too much. He's a villain in Deadpool, isn't he? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. he's kind of like whatever there. And so yeah. to see him play another villain here and obviously riffing on Nazis. I still <laughs> He's gotten better each time when he's because he was a, a villain in Elite Battle Angel and That's right, seen, yeah. yeah. And he's usually like boring. He's like he's like he's like some he's like a Jai Courtney to me. Yeah, no, he <laughs> yeah. totally is. And he like took over the transport where, for a hot second and that didn't last long. Yeah, this, where yeah, he can be that guy where he can be Oh, and I remember now I finally remember him in game. I did not. I, I remember that there was a switcheroo that happened. But I could not pull the face. Now I yeah. see it. Like he was the first one. Yeah, right? he was Dario Naharis. And then the guy who plays a gunner, he was the second one. Yeah, and he was the main one uh, who was around. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. And he was with Amelia Clark. I forget which. I forgot which character it was. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 Okay. I. Well, anyway, I thought he was excellent here. Um. The performers overall were good. I would say, but I really don't know. See, the difference <laughs> with, um, it, I, no, I don't want to say I don't know. Like, I think they're all good. Uh, and I have some specific ones I want to kind of target a little bit here. Put a target on them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> target on your back. I guess I don't really know how strong the characters are because of this director's cut, theatrical cut debacle that we're in. It just you feels know? so obviously gutted of character beats, yeah. Like, Batman v Superman was the start of... Like, he's done other director's cuts before, but Batman v Superman was, to me, the bigger, the biggest testament and the most vocal one of you watch an extended version and it's actually so much better. And that was only, like, 15 to 20 minutes longer. Yeah. But it was. And the performances were even stronger and on all these things. And the chemistry was there. And, and the difference with that was I could actually see a version where that would exist. Yeah. From watching the theatrical version. Yeah. Because you still had, like, Gal Gadot made an impression Ben Affleck, people were like, he's great in this movie, you know? <laughs> like, and even for people like us who didn't like that theatrical cut when we saw it, we were just like, but they're really good, and, like, they stand out. And when they're on screen, they're awesome. Alfred. Yeah. Like, there were these performers that were there that you just knew were excellent. And then, of course, having, like, a, being acquainted with Henry Cavill and Man of Steel prior. So there was a lot working for it. We're here. This is an introduction to a bunch of new characters. Um, you know, there's a, there's a new IP that's being created and so this is my our, our introduction to a lot of them, and, and and honestly, like my the biggest letdown for the movie for me is the introductions of them. I could see one person 
Not one person. Why am I saying like that? Uh, I can see one version is the word I'm looking for. You have no idea how long it takes. It's okay, you're doing great. I, you're I, doing I want, great. I didn't want it to. I don't want that to bleed over. I want to. I want to end this strong. Killing it. So you could see. I can see one version of this where you could see sort of the. Um, it's it's how I felt when we were first getting to know Cora. Sophia Butella's character like sure is this so expositional yeah. is this so on the nose is this so familiar is this so like self poetic pretentious romanticism with its own dialogue yeah yeah but it felt intentional mm-hmm. it, it felt purposeful so I was like I don't know I'm digging it I mean is this what people were complaining about because I if that's what it is then I don't give a shit like I like it yeah. it was when we started getting to other characters as the recruitment process started happening where I'm like okay we spent a good chunk of time here with village pe- farmer people yeah. like the first 40 minutes is just with them and then everyone else is like a quick 5 to 7 minutes other than guy who gets bird uh, every, everything else is like a quick five to seven minutes. Yeah. We just like get some backstory that uh, riffs on like, uh, col- oh my God, John, help me out with the word colonization. Col- uh, colonization. Colonization. <laughs> colonization. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, with colonization and can feel a little bit poetic, but honestly, it feels hacked up. In my, in my viewing experience, it felt hacked up. Uh, there were times <laughs> where we would like cut to a character like Lady with Swords. Uh, where I was like, wait a minute, I feel like there's something here that's completely missing of how we got here that I have no investment in what's happening here. And that investment would just constantly get more diluted the more we would meet a new character. Like by the time I got to Ray Fisher's character, it was like, who's this? Okay, there's supposed to be this big rise in catharsis and rebellion. And then he dies, and I'm like, I don't really... I don't really care because I don't really know this guy <laughs> like, yeah, at I, all. <laughs> I only kind of care because I know it's Ray Fisher. <laughs> this, yeah. this was a fascinating experience because to me, this movie felt like what happens to a movie when it becomes a reaction highlight reel. <laughs> like it's it's it feels like it is reduced down to like, here's the main beats you need to understand and to support whatever we're about to say. But, you know, without the reaction part actually happening it's just the movie yeah it felt like somebody yeah ran all these clippets together and i wonder what it would be like to watch this without the knowledge that there's gonna be a director's cut and all that stuff and whoever's idea it was and why yeah it's interesting because at the beginning with the stuff with sophia butella and and meeting you know this world of velt you are like okay maybe the the directness and the familiarity of this is like a choice right could be and i'm fine with that because yeah sometimes things aren't trying to reinvent the wheel they're just trying to put a particularly nice shine and spin on it right but uh yeah once you get to a certain point it feels like all you get is the punch for everybody's intro and none of the lead up to any of that and it really suffers dynamically because of that and the visuals are working overtime to sell you everything and it's fascinating because this is like I enjoyed watching it and and I wanted to keep watching it. And I think Zack Snyder is always like a really, uh, I don't know, skilled and enthusiastic world builder, aesthetician. You know, like I always get the sense that there is like a rich bedrock of stuff, even if it's comprised of many parts. Like I'm always interested in what his visions are and in spending time in these worlds. Again, not having seen Sucker Punch, I've heard some people say that movie is kind of off putting. But the rest of them, usually I'm like, oh, even if the plotting isn't working for me, I'm still like engrossed in the place of this. And so, yeah, seeing like bad reviews going in, I don't feel quite that way. But at the same time, I kind of agree with all the gripes. It's like weird. I, I'm not mad or and I'm not almost even like let down, b- but it is just so apparent that there's so much missing that makes this a really story deficient experience. So it does ironically feel the most like a movie made to sell TVs out of any of his movies. Uh, thus far because it starts to feel like somebody who like makes commercials directed it which I mean you know he he did make commercials but uh you know I don't know it's a I'm trying to put my finger on like how to describe my feeling on this movie I would say the visuals are what push it over to like a 6.5 to 7 for me 6.5 I'll be totally honest it's like a 6.5 maybe a 6 it's like if I was a Rotten Tomato score I would just barely be passing fresh because the narrative and characters themselves just don't cut it for me here. Like, yeah. there's so many of them, 
and they're all kind of given essentially the same kind of story and dialogue yeah. and background with a slightly different tinge of something. He's a general, but it's all the and same shit. he's been shit. disgraced. Yeah. And, oh, you were a mother and you lost your kid and you've got a vendetta for yeah. that. And yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, um, like Sophia Butella's Cora, I think physically she's a, a, a like very capable and an imposing figure. Oh damn! Like she's great physically. Like I totally buy and believe her. Like that, her body language. It's really again maybe in the extended version with the uh, expansion on dialogue scene she's given it works. But here, I don't know. It just wasn't strong enough of a performer to. Uh, be captivating in those moments where she was having like big dialogue moments because the scenes themselves aren't strong enough because there's uh, everything surrounding or leading up and yada yada yada. That's, you know, you know what a lot of this felt like <laughs> to me. What it 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 felt like, and I know this isn't the case because there's like a four hour version out there. Yeah, it it felt like it, someone typed into Chat GBT. <laughs> Nate, I want to do a movie that takes place that's a combination of Star Wars, Dune, Lord of the Rings, Rings yeah. and uh, write me a movie that and the Magnificent Seven, Seven Samurai. Write me a movie that is it's that. All that, and that stuff. is what this is. And I don't take offense to that or find it um, egregious in any way because Zack Snyder's voice and uh, what he's gravitated towards. If you look at his filmography, I haven't seen Zucker Bunch of Legends of Go or whatever. <laughs> um, is, you know, like the things he's known for are adaptations. Mm -hmm. And as and, and then when he does something that's original, it, it his whole point is being derivative and, and homaging like a billion other things. Like, it's like being a yeah. kid crashing all your favorite yeah. stuff together. Yeah. yeah, like so when it comes, when you really think about it, story-wise, when it comes to originality, that's not really what people are drawn to Zack Snyder about in terms yeah. of, story i'm talking about it's the feeling and the vibe and the and the awe of yeah. the spectacle that he is able to communicate yeah because narratively story-wise none of this really <laughs> everything feels like it's from something else i've seen this like, feels like does. like my <laughs> bad memory of a movie except it was the whole movie <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, not uh, bad but, in terms of like a sour memory, but like I don't remember all of this movie, and that feels <laughs> like all of the, what they gave us here. <laughs> and that's how I feel when watching this is like I, uh, I don't, I don't mind that I, that it's derivative of like a billion other things. I don't mind that. I, no. I really don't, because um, you could feel a an eager inspiration of someone being like, oh, this is kind of like my. This, like you said during the reaction, like this is how Zack Snyder will often take the fantastical thing we all know when he's doing like one of his derivative pieces, and then like, what's the harsher reality version of this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and totally. that's what he does. That's that's just what we we know him to do, and and so when watching this, I'm like, yeah, it's about what I'd expect uh, when watching the trailer for this movie. Uh, story wise, but one thing I cannot forgive a movie on is if you're gonna have this many characters, they gotta have chemistry, mm -hmm. and the characters have if to you're be make a team, especially. That's what I mean. It's an ensemble of a team that's banding together for a cause. I'm like, well, you got to get your simple story down, really easy to latch onto, uh, because the most you got to do is like at least make up for lack of story with good with um. I don't know, fun to watch characters. They're not even like fun. That's the problem is the characters aren't even like fun to watch. Well, they didn't give them any time to build camaraderie or build any kind of team spirit of any kind. Like like uh, Sophia Butella's character has like a conversation with the Charlie Hunnam character. And that's only really to convince us he's not a bad guy right before the twist comes around that he is a bad guy. And so like it seems pretty likely that like. All of the stuff that's missing from this is probably all the stuff is going to go back into the director's cut. But it is funny to me, whoever made it this way from, you know, the powers that be, because it does betray the tone and that cornerstone of Zack Snyder's aesthetic in making these things feel more real. Because by removing us from any time spent with the characters and removing us from time spent in the world past that opening bit in Velt where you spend the most breathable room getting to know the place like you're traveling to so many distant interesting looking worlds and you can feel the love from behind the camera for what all these creatures and places and and all these political machinations are but it undercuts that grit of realism by not having any meat on that bone and you brought up multiple times during the movie it's like they let us know via dialogue how terrible the mother world is um 
and you know Ed Screen, good villain, the guy who is her like surrogate father who picks her up on the battlefield. Actually, some decent presence from that guy, like interesting, formidable presence. However, yeah, you don't really feel, you don't get to witness the true horrific might of the mother world. You just kind of, I don't know, everywhere you go is kind of crappy, so you just have to assume that that's their fault or something. Yeah, like if you look at the movies as borrowing from. Yeah. See, I think the strongest part of this movie is the f- before they venture out on the quest. Yeah, because then it's like, just like the, a pretty fine yeah, blockbuster. Yeah, the four, the first forty five minutes, like when when she actually, like as cliche as it is, with like girl about to be assaulted, and then main character. Step, usually, it's a guy who's like the main character to step in and save yeah. the day. Um, so as as cliche as much of a trope as it is, um, I still really like uh, like this is effective. This is strong. I'm rooting for Sofia Butella. I want to get to know who she is. Mm-hmm. The, and 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 the farmer village town, like I kind of feel like we lost sight of all that. And when they start going out and exploring the galaxy, is when the movie slowly just kept it starting smaller to, and smaller in terms of impact, <laughs> yeah. in terms of emotional and impact narrow, and, and yeah. interest. You know, it's like we just kept going to other parts of the world and. The story itself, uh, the engrossment of that just started to dwindle mm-hmm. when I was like, I was actually extremely more invested in this. We were just in this one section, <laughs> this one spot. Yeah. And and uh, and, I, and I think what they do with Sophia Batella's character that I I find is not really. It seems like the script confused and maybe this is just the theatrical version. It feels like the script confuses bombastic flashbacks with heavy amounts of exposition for world building and character development. Yes, it does. When that's not what's really... They're just kind of explaining shit, you know? And yeah, they're just giving <laughs> you setups so that you know what the motivations are so that we know why we're fighting, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then, yeah, to that point about the motherland, like, for comparisons, and compared to the things that it's derived from, like, even in the first Star Wars movie, you're not watching the Empire, like, you know, destroy villages left and right or some shit. Like, they... some. Uh, but when you go to towns, there's like stormtroopers there, and there's a lot of emphasis and talk about it. You, you see them see destroy the all Tehran. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You see this some, could pop off at any moment. And there's a lot of, and there's not as many cutting around to, so you're really focused. And a lot of the conversations are about like, here's what the empire will do. Like everywhere you go, the the vibe of the empire is around. Yeah. In some capacity, Dune, same thing. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you that's get more, a sense for the proximity of places in those worlds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I like the idea idea of doing like a Seven Samurai, but on a galactic level. Yeah. Um, but the problem is Seven Samurai and Magnificent Seven, those movies are all about one town. And, <laughs> and, and like this one dude who's this, one, this group of people who are oppressing this one town. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's very, it's, it's, yeah. That's you, why that first hour is effective for that. Yeah, yeah. those movies are sprawling and they are long, but, but they are sort of simple in that way as you get the team together. They got to fortify the villagers, help them fight for themselves, and then they take on the bad guy. Yeah, so when you start cutting around and you're trying to do like additional world building on top of world building, and then you start to like kind of lose sight of it. So to me, I was like, there's a lot of potential that kind of just seems like it's getting lost in the in the array of things, and now it's getting so caught up in uh, delivering information and wanting to be cool that <laughs> we are now missing out on just like the basics, and the basics being an ensemble movie where you got like great, ca- like you have so many great actors here. But you know the writing is so weak to the, uh, of them to the point where they're not even enough to elevate it to make the characters actually interesting. They don't even get a <laughs> yeah. chance to shine through that. Yeah, it's like it really feels like you you got whisked past something really fast. Like somebody pulled you in a room and said, "Look at all this cool stuff," but we got to run through here. We got to get out of here because we got another one of these to get to. Right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, like it really does feel like a like a like a recollection in hindsight but made into a movie somehow. And and it's like you have these creatures and things, and you have, like, I, I really it's enjoyed awesome. that spider scene with Jenna Malone, uh, and that, you know, there are so many alien species and stuff like that, and those are things that give you questions that you, as a viewer, will probably happily give the movie a little extra time and benefit of the doubt to go exploring. And I do think it's funny that Zack Snyder seems like a filmmaker who just... I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but I, he just seems like he has to make a long movie. It's, there's no other way he has to make a long ass movie. And this is like two hours and it feels like, yeah, like it's been shredded down to this felt kind of like a less maddening to me version of what happened to Batman v Superman. 
and I get the sense more was cut from this, where it's like, let's just trim out as much as we can to get to two hours, and whatever that is, we're going to put it out. And uh, I, f- I felt like it, the shredding wasn't really felt until they start, until they left farmland. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, the part where it's... It weirdly, I liked that we got to establish Velt and and the people there, and and we got to spend some time in that. However, funny enough, I would trade it for the rushed prologue intro thing if it meant we could breathe in assembling the team, because that's what's really important. Like you, you got to care for the home that you're fighting for, and for her to come back and be like, "Oh yeah," she says something about you know like calling it home being a nice thing. Uh, but in a movie like this, where the whole charm is going to be the team and their dynamic together and each of them having unique moments when the fight finally, you know, reaches ahead and, you know, you know, some people aren't going to make it. I, I would have happily traded 20 or more of those opening minutes on Velt for flesh on those bones, because it does start to feel like some kind of greatest hits medley from comprised of a bunch of, complete albums you've never heard <laughs> yeah <laughs> like uh especially if you want to get people to watch like part two you know and i know there's a lot of people i've seen I, i'm sure if i go on twitter there's a lot of people who are like loving this right now critic score bad audience score middling um and i it, to me though it yeah I, i'm like i kind of w- it's not you either put more work in your theatrical cut or, or don't rely on people having to watch your director's cut. I, I don't I don't agree with how the handling of that. It's streaming. You there there aren't as many rules and like if anyone is gonna if you have any chance of getting big numbers on a long, long movie, it's a Zack Snyder joint. And it feels like a disservice to everything going on here and to the sequel to split this in half. And then do a mono cut. Because from my understanding, the director's cut will be both parts plus an hour. So, like, at that point, just do that or find a way to cut that version in half. Because this seems... I don't know. Like, I, I, I would be fascinated in the future when more, you know, when you can... I'm sure there are NDAs and whatever. I would, I would be curious to hear the story of this later down the line because... I, if I was Zack Snyder making a movie, I'm not sure I would be totally thrilled with this cut. And he's like, oh, yeah, the director's cut feels like a whole different movie. And while I don't think that that's necessarily 100 percent true, I'm like, I could see how it definitely would feel like a different experience because this is it's just so strange. I can't even put my f- I can't find a proper word because I wouldn't call this bad, but it is clearly deficient of things that are like super necessary. Like, there are so many elements well, it that I... Have, it doesn't have to be black and white. I, I think, like, everything that's good about it is obvious, and the things that are bad about it are also obvious. Yeah, it's like, part of me is like, I liked it. It's, it's pretty cool. Subjectively speaking, of yeah. course. I'm yeah. sure there are people who really like some of these characters. I don't, the, I'm not going to... We won't try to take that away from you. Yeah, and I mean, sure, there, there's plenty that, like, an actor you like and, you know, a cool look can do, and I, I you know, I certainly, you know, gravitate towards those things, too. And this is, I don't know, this is one of those things where I'm happy to want to learn more about these characters rather than finishing this and being like, I don't care to see any more of this stuff. Like, you know, there's only more goodwill that can be built on top of this because, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, and I've heard some people mention the creator uh, while talking about this movie, and that is another movie that is like supremely derivative of a bunch of things, but has... A good amount more, and it doesn't even fully breathe as well as it could do, but that movie, you know, in being quite familiar, still manages to feel like kind of a rich experience or one of those you walk out of and you're like, you know, that's not perfect, but a real big applause for the effort. And here I'm like, this isn't perfect, applause for the effort, but also I feel like you could have easily not been in this position. Yeah you know, a hundred different ways. <laughs> I don't know, but that's just our pay on it. I'm like somewhere between a six to a 6.5. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it keeps, same. Going, keeps going down for me a little I'm, bit. I'm excited for I'm, part two. I'm definitely like, there's enough in here to push you right past that rotten line. Yeah. It, like visually, but in terms of, I'm just looking at like narrative and story, you know, like I could watch a movie that's riddled with cliches. Sure. I could watch a movie that's real, that's so derivative, it's but it's like food. it's also about like what is the emotion it's leaving me with, and and uh, to me it, it like the emotion it left me with was like 
there's a lot I admired here in my head. And emotionally, I was like, eh, it's kind of... Kind <laughs> emotionally. Of like, it's a little vacant on the emotion side. That's a good word for it. Yeah. It just doesn't even feel like there's a chance to connect. No, there's, nothing, a, yeah. there's nothing like... Nothing really brought like a big smile to my face. Nothing like shocked me. And even like the while the action's like really cool to look at, it's not memorable enough for me to be like, I'll at least want to turn in for part two for the crazy action. Yeah, yeah you know? it's, it's like a, even with Transformers, you'd be like, ah, you know, that fucking action though, you know, or some shit. Yeah, yeah actually, that's a bad. I hate the action in most of those movies. It, oh. Those get incessant. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, I, I get what you mean. Like while you're. While you're watching it, it's very appealing, and and at least for me, I'm you know you're always wanting to give yeah. it to the, the benefit of the doubt. But again, with all those things missing, it just loses the ability to be fun in any superlative way or dramatic or intense. It's it's no. badass in moments if the visuals are supporting that, uh, and and that's the thing is like you know again in the. F- oh, first part of the movie you're sitting there going yeah this could be derivative as hell but it's part of the vision like Zack Snyder's vision is kind of the star that can make all of that okay <laughs> and and palatable because of his enthusiasm and because yeah. you could clearly tell like this dude should be writing a hundred thousand graphic novels where he could probably fully always realize his vision yeah reads like a graphic novel too. and and yeah and, and through yeah. that perspective mm. I'm happy to be like ah you know that's fine you know as long as the actors can sell the dialogue but we're whatever. not watching a graphic no, but we are more. watching a movie, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyway, guys, what did you think about it though? Are you ultimately satisfied? Are you gonna be watching the director's cut? Are you excited for Rebel Moon Part Two? Leave your thoughts down below. Subscribe. Leave a like. Patreon. <laughs> All right, John, pick a name. All right, let's do Gabriel. Gabriel, do you know what you're getting for Christmas? What? You are getting this comment that, what is it, John? What did Gabriel oh, say? Did you find it? I didn't, but we're going to watch hell, for man? it in real time because we had to you, get into this. There's a whole this. thing that you were like, I Gabriel just, left a comment and it was funny. And, and then I, well, I was like, Gabriel geez. gave us an inkling as to like where he is is based. So like, uh, yeah, oh my god, like, we'll get to it, man. Know. I'm getting, I'm getting while they get the time got, is sensitive right? here. We are on Gabriel's time, okay? Gabriel's so impatient. Gabriel just cannot stop hassling this us is, at all times I, of day. I, like, I, hey. I fight with Gabriel on the daily. Oh, really? Is he a good fighter? Is he, do you like to spar? He's a he's a bit of a bitch. <laughs> I gotta hey. admit, man, he slaps. That's messed up, he dude. Slaps. He's French he Canadian. He says he's too nice to stop pledging. Oh no, he's shit. A French Canadian. Look I was worried about my my bitch fighting joke, but but ah, now you got to go even harder he's on a him. Slapper, that French Canadian. Uh, freak. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Hit go, me with a maple? Go enjoy your coated baguette. Poutine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, hang out with your moose. Go use your hyper specific uh, accent. Yeah, yeah. How's the ice skating going hey. around? How's a, how's a lot of hockey coming along? How's public relations with other Canadians? That's a good question. Actually. I understand fair people are unfairly argument. harsh on French Canadians, especially the French Canadians. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do they ever do to anybody? Well, Maybe let's get there is a French in there. You know, did they come over and conquer? They helped us out, so like we're cool. Except we always make fun of them for surrendering all the time. But otherwise, a bunch you know, of bitches. Them French. <laughs> those French people. <laughs> Maybe they've been really oppressive up in Canada. Who knows? <laughs> they can take a joke. Which one? The French or the Canadians? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the know. French Canadians? <laughs> I don't know. And I feel like nowadays no one could take a joke. But you know who can is Gabriel. Gabriel knows a good joke when he. Gabriel, hears one. thank you for always being understanding with us, and for thank you for being an atheist. Uh, Happy Festivus. Ha- what's that? For the rest of us, apparently it's a thing that they created on Seinfeld or something. What does that mean? It's like a ho- it's like the surrogate Christmas for atheists. So it's like, here's a secular holiday that we can pretty much do the same shit around. So they just, what do they celebrate? Not believing in anything? What, what a weird thing to celebrate. <laughs> I guess they just celebrate togetherness. We're here today to honor nothing. <laughs> We, yes, we had a mass. We went to Festivus Church. We went to Atheist Church and had a, a Festivus mass. thing. Yeah, a candlelight vigil. All right, good for you. 
Um, <laughs> happy Festivus Day. Hope happy you're, Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa. Hope you're rolling your eyes at everyone's beliefs this holiday season. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're folding and looking your down arms. your nose at people <laughs> and judging them for believing in fantasies. <laughs> hope you fold your arms during Christmas dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd refuse, to refuse participate. to participate. I hope you shove down your beliefs of science versus religion. <laughs> yeah, I hope and, you walk into a church on Christmas Day with just I like a, the a copy of Darwin ruined history, ruined American and Canadian culture. So yeah, sure. yeah, have fun ruining the holidays for everyone. Yeah, and not understanding that yourself. no one really gives a shit about the religious side other than the religious people. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe we should go to uh, Christmas mass. For no, it is sake. so it is long. A long service. I'm not gonna say boring. <laughs> it just but that it's might deliberately be service. an emotion that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably appreciate it more now than I ever did in the times we were really doing that. <laughs> Before it would be like, oh man, I'm gonna be so tired and. This have to well then I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be like be wow these people are like really two and a half hours. committed but if i close my eyes <laughs> i might be able to get a good nap in. I, I might be able to talk to god on the astral plane i went i took my grandma-in-law Ooh. to church out here really i think it was palm sunday or something there was some one of them take and the <laughs> church I took her and I paid attention the whole time, entire time. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed it. I was an, actually in admiration of everyone there. And it was like an extra long mass. It was like an hour and a half. It was a foot long, yeah. Yeah, it was a foot long mass. <laughs> and then uh and then they decided to have the exits be different than usual, where it's like one row at a time. You know how big that church is. Oh yeah. So that was like one row at a time. And then they had like an ex an, an encore outside. Whoa. And I was like, okay, now you're testing my patience. <laughs> now you're because testing my faith. I thought we were ready to go to the parking lot and leave. <laughs> now we're outside of the church after an already extended period. More worship. And we are now here with cars passing by, listening to you talk. <laughs> this is going on way too long, man. I've been really respectful and kind. I've actually enjoyed it and taken away some of the lessons the, the overall lessons. So I had a good time. No alcohol required. Didn't need the <laughs> wine. And now we're here. No, I got to go. No, we stayed. And, and it was fine. Oh. Anyway, Gabriel, really don't have to deal with any of that. <laughs> yeah, atheist. you don't have to worry at all. <laughs> yeah, enjoy that extra few hours. Happy Atheist Day. I hope I can join you on it. Yeah. Peace and objectivity. 